In this video, we learn about sequential coding in BSTL. So we learn more about uh, other statements that are used along with the uh, process. So in the last video, we learned briefly about what a process is and how is it used to execute statements sequentially. So in this video, we learn about other statements that are used along with processes and a bit further about processes. So let's get started. So this is the NAND gate that we had written last time. And these statements over here, they run concurrently. They are not sequential statements. So, um, so yeah, we would like to redefine the NAND gate using sequential coding. Um, so yeah, so the entity part will remain the same. There are no change, there'll be no changes to the entity. However, we'll change things in the architectural part over here. So uh, first off, you'd want to use sequential coding, right? So you would, so to code sequentially, we need a process. So process begin and let's just write end process over here. So the next thing is you want to think about what is the truth table of a NAND gate. So a NAND gate, it's zero only when both of its inputs are one. So if X is one and Y is one, only then there will be zero, else it's always one. So let's try to capture this fact using a if else statement. So if X is one and Y is one, so there are multiple things to note over here. First off, the comparison operator in VSTL is a single equal to and not double equal to like C++. The other thing is that don't write X equal to one, like one without inverted commas is an integer. It's an integer data type. Whereas, uh, yeah, with inverted commas, it's like, it's something you can use in STD logic. And another thing is that you can use and to combine conditions over here, right? So if X is one and Y is one, then, so first of all, let me just, uh, yeah, anyways, yeah, so, uh, so if both of them are one, then I would like to set Z to zero, right? Else in all other cases, Z should be equal to one. And let's close our if statement, right? And this stem signal is not needed over here. So that's pretty much it about like how you can implement the NAND gate. But there's something uh, important missing over here. So let's talk about something called as the sensitivity list of a process. So the sensitivity list of a process is a list of signals such that um, if any of the signals in this list changes, then the process is re-evaluated. It runs again. So we have to exclu exclusively specify what's the sensitivity list of a process. So in this case, we would want our process to run every time X and Y changes, like either X or Y changes. So sensitivity list of a process will be X comma Y. Uh, so VSCL standards say that if you don't mention the sensitivity list of a process, you must have at least one wait statement inside. So that is why the process inside our test bench, you see uh, it has wait statements and which is why it is allowed to not have a sensitivity list over here. But because this doesn't have a wait statement, we'll have to use uh, yeah a, a sensitivity list over here. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it. And like let's try to run it with the with the test bench that we had written last time. So first off, let's open uh, model sim. And let's create a project. So let's call it new project. Uh, let's change this directory to say projects over here okay and let's add these files so 
So now having done this, let's compile everything. And both of them compiled with no errors. So we can go to the simulation part. Let's add a wave for x1, x2, f and g. So on x2. Let's make the simulation length as 10 nanoseconds and let's just run the simulation. And let's look at the waveform that we have over here. Yeah. So, so when both of them are zero, the output is one. When x1 is zero, x2 is one, the output is still one. When x1 is one and x2 is zero, the output is one. But when both of them are one, the output is zero. So this is the correct uh, yeah, this is the correct truth table for the NAND gate. So, so yeah, we have a correct truth table for the NAND gate. And yeah, that's pretty much how you code it in a sequential manner. And that's it for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we will learn how to write a D flip flop using a, a sequential, in a sequential coding manner. Thank you.